Zen, your mic is really, really low. All right. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another awesome study out of the Gospel of Nicodemus, the Acts of Pontius Pilate, in the Great Commission 2. Uh, we're looking forward to reading through. This is our third segment of reading through this particular book, and it's been quite a bit of fun so far. Uh, today we're going to be reading some very, very little-known texts about the Messiah's descent into Sheol, and it's quite an interesting read, and I'm looking forward to getting into it with everyone. I uh, don't have too many announcements this study. Uh, Joy and I will be joining Take on the World uh, later on this month, and other than that, we'll just get right into fellowshipping. We got some people joining us that haven't been with us in a while. I'm so glad to see you again, finally free. How have you been, brother? I'm doing well. Oh, I just realized my mic wasn't muted. Pardon me. I hope you guys can hear all that. No worries at all. But I'm doing, I'm trying to set up my second computer screen. I just moved, so everything's everywhere. Uh, pardon me for that. Second computer screen. We're getting fancy. I, I actually built it out of an old laptop. I removed the screen. Uh, it's easier to do than you think, but it's pretty sweet. Very cool. That is really awesome. Joy has her MacBook hooked up to a, a little uh, Acer screen, but I'm just sitting here with my solo screen, feeling <laughs> like I'm living in the 90s, I guess. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta have it to be able to read the text in chat at the same time. It really, really helps. Definitely, definitely, I agree. Well, thank you everybody again for joining us, and for everyone that's joining in the YouTube live chat, I highly encourage you to check out the description box below the video where you'll see an invite to the Discord lounge where you can participate in the study. You can read and talk with us. We always spend our first 10 minutes in fellowship and letting everyone, uh, you know, roll in a couple minutes late. It's very casual. And then at 710, we'll begin with a short prayer and then we'll get into the reading. The reading for tonight is also in a link in the description box. And I also posted it in the Discord lounge. And yeah, I look forward to reading with everyone. Wow, we have quite a few people joining us. I'm so excited to see you. Hey, Kylie. Hi, Hi Brenda. Hey, Brenda and Holly. Hello. 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 Breath of Yah. That's a, that looks like a new Yeah, person. hello, Breath of Yah. And hello, Molly. Hello, blessings all. Sorry I'm late. Hey, Molly. No worries, brother. Hey, brother. Oh. Hi, Breath of Yah. You're, you're, you're on mute. Apologize, but you're good. Now. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Hello. Okay. Shalom. 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 Welcome. Shalom. Oh, Shanice is also joining us in the YouTube live stream. Hey, Shanice. Hi, Shanice. Very Let cool. there be light says Shalom. Shalom, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome. How's the weather in New Zealand, Kylie? Well, I've got my fire on. And, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We were to get snow yesterday, but it never arrived. So, yeah, but it's only for another few weeks, and then it will be warming up. Very cool. It's always interesting to hear how the weather is in the south. On the outer rim. <laughs> outer rim, yes. <clears throat> and are you folk all baking in the beautiful sunshine? Yes. Yeah, it's definitely hot. Today was really beautiful. Yes, we had like a swarm of um, hummingbirds when we were hanging out with Zen. And there was like five, five hummingbirds, I think, and, like just dancing around each yeah. other. And it was so beautiful. They were battling yeah. for position over the rose bush. <laughs> and the theater. <clears throat> Lovely. <clears throat> We've got all our spring flowers about to bloom oh, a little while. The little heads are awesome. out of the soil and. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? The different seasons of the world. 
It's amazing just watching the cycles of the seasons. It's so beautiful how y'all crafted everything and everything has its time and its season, you know. Yes. Then I noticed your mic is really low. Is there a way? I turned up the sound all the way. I'm not sure. And then Justin set the settings for Discord before. It actually sounds left, better so. all of a sudden. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Uh, didn't do anything. I'm not sure. <laughs> but if it's too low, I won't read. No, actually. Um, it, and I'll just listen. It sounds much better. Maybe it was. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but you sound better now. Yeah, sounds perfect. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Hey, and, Kathy. Uh, I don't know. I always have problems <laughs> with Discord. Good evening. I'm going to pass on reading tonight. There's lots of readers anyways. Thanks. Okay, thank you for letting us know. Does everybody else, that's a good time to figure out who wants to read and who does not want to read. Does, yeah, does anyone else not want to read? So, okay. So, oh. I'll just need to know where and, you know, what to read. Sure. So the link to the reading is in the Digital Readers Club chat. And you can just click that. And I don't know if we're going to do a chapter each today or what, what do you want to do, Justin? Yeah, I think we could break the chapters in half. Just read half a chapter per person. Except for the last couple chapters that only have like nine verses. Well, the fourth chapter. So I guess just kind of when you have, when you're ready to pass along the baton, just stop reading. Yeah. yeah. So first chapter has 25 verses. Just read about 12 verses and then we'll pass it on from to, there. To Brenda and then we'll move on to Zen, then finally Free, Holly, myself, Justin, Molive, Kylie, and I know Vahid is also not reading today, so I'm not sure if we even have that much reading to do, but it's great to have so many readers and people to yeah, fellowship Yeah, it's with. awesome to see the family growing, especially in the Discord yes. chat, because we always do a praying time after the live stream is over. We take prayer requests and pray together, and that is a lot of our favorite time. But before we get started, it's 7.09. I suggest everybody in the YouTube live stream sit back in your seats because we're about to blast off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you a video that Joy and one of our brothers, Martin Stein, from South Africa have been working on very hard. And for everyone that's in the Discord chat, uh, let me post up the live stream link so you can get in so you don't miss the video. And for anybody who is with us for the AMAs, you've probably seen this video already. Sit back. Whoops, excuse me. I think it's going to happen. All right. <laughs> Is everybody ready? <laughs> We're blasting off in three, two, one. Sacred Word Revealed comes to Atlanta, Georgia on March 27th to 29th, 2020. Purpose to reveal end time mysteries to prepare the final generation. We must don the full armor of God. Featuring Zen Garcia, Gary Wayne, Stephen and Yana Benoon, Dr. Stephen Pigeon, Justin James Garcia, Dr. Joy Pugh. Buy your tickets now at sacredwordreveal.com. I hope everybody enjoyed that video. I will play it again as often as everybody wants. Just let us know. 
<laughs> I'm just playing. We'll play it one more time at the end of the study. But for now, it's 7 11. We'll say a quick prayer and then we'll get straight into the reading. Father Yah, we humble ourselves before you and we just lift up your holy name. Father, we are just so thankful for all that you've done throughout history and preserving us until this moment in preserving our families and preserving your word and your testimony so that we could live in this very moment in the culmination of all things in this end times father we thank you for revealing yourself even to us in this far off time that you've preserved your testimony and that we can study these words and study the prophecies and study the testimonies of the apostles and of your prophets and of your people that were chosen from Abraham. We just look to you, Father, for guidance, and we look to you for life, for you're the only one who holds the goodness in this world. You are the true goodness, you are the true light, and you are the true way. And we just seek you, Father, because all of our ways, all of our righteousness, it was all like filthy rags, Father. Without you, without your spirit, we can do nothing. But with you, we know we can do all things. So we pray, Father, that you would accept us in our humbleness, Father, and give us strength and give us wisdom and guidance to be able to walk out our days throughout this life with purpose, with meaning, and with a passion to reach the people who are still walking in the darkness that we were all born into father please use us to raise raise up the the banner that you are to wave your light around to shine on everyone and to let them know that you love them and that you came for all of us and that we are not anything special but you are special and you have called us and even though many are called, we know few are chosen, Father. So please be with us, and we thank you for rounding us up together and bringing your chosen together to be able to study and to seek you, to love you, and to uplift you, to praise to you. We just thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to join together with friends and family from all over. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be strengthened in the study and the fellowship. We ask that you would preserve us, protect us, be with all those who are suffering right now and who are in need. Please be with our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted. We just ask that you would strengthen them and strengthen us to, to prepare us for, for our time of trial. We praise you. In the name of the Messiah, Yahusha. Amen. 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 Hey, Joy, I'm actually going to pass on the reading. Okay. Thank you for letting us know. All right. If we would like to, we can go ahead and start with the reading. The Gospel of Nicodemus, the Acts of Pontius Pilate, Chapter 11. Then Nicodemus arose and said, Yea, said, Right, O sons of Israel, ye have heard what those three men have sworn by the law of God, who said, We have seen Jesus speaking with his disciples upon Mount Olivet, and we saw him ascending up to heaven. And the scripture teacheth us that blessed prophet Elijah was taken up to heaven, and Elisha, being asked by the sons of the prophets, where is our father, Elijah? He said to them that he is taken up to heaven. And the sons of the prophets said to him, Perhaps the Spirit hath carried him into one of the mountains of Israel. There perhaps we shall find him. And they besought Elisha. And he walked about with them three days, and they could not find him. And now hear me, O sons of Israel, and let us send men into the mountains of Israel, lest perhaps the Spirit hath carried away Jesus, and there perhaps we shall find him and be satisfied. And the council of Nicodemus pleased all the people, 
and they sent forth men who sought for Jesus, but could not find him. And they returning said, We went all about, but could not find Jesus. But we have found Joseph in his city of Arimathea. The rulers hearing this, and all the people, were glad, and praised God of Israel, because Joseph was found, whom they had shut up in a chamber, and could not find. And when they had formed a large assembly, the chief priests said, By what means shall we bring Joseph to us to speak with him? And taking a piece of paper, they wrote to him and said, Peace be with thee and all thy family. We know that we have offended against God and thee. Be pleased to give us a visit to us, your fathers for we were perfectly surprised at your escape from prison. We know that it was malicious counsel which we took against thee, and that the Lord took care of thee, and the Lord himself delivered thee from our designs. Peace be unto thee, Joseph, and art honorable among all the people. And they chose seven of Joseph's friends and said to them, when ye come to Joseph, salute him in peace and give him this letter. Accordingly, when the men came to Joseph, they did salute him in peace and gave him the letter. And when Joseph had read it, he said, Blessed be the Lord, who, dis who didst deliver me from the Israelites, that they could not shed my blood. Blessed be God, who has protected me under thy wings. And Joseph kissed them and took them into his house. And on the morrow, Joseph mounted his ass and went along with them to Jerusalem. And when all the Jews heard these things, they went out to meet him and cried out, saying, Peace, attend thy coming hither, Father Joseph. To which he answered, Prosperity from the Lord attend all the people. And they all kissed him. And Nicodemus took him to his house, having prepared a large entertainment. But on the morrow, being a preparation day, Ananias and Caiaphas and Nicodemus said to Joseph, Make confession to the God of Israel, and answer to us all those questions which we shall ask thee. For we have been very much troubled that thou didst bury the body of Jesus, and that when we had locked thee in a chamber, we could not find thee, and we have been afraid ever since, till this time of thy appearing among us. Tell us therefore before God all that came to pass. Then Joseph answering said, Ye did intend put me under confinement on the day of preparation, Till the morning. But while I was standing at prayer in the middle of the night, the house was surrounded with four angels, and I saw Jesus as the brightness of the sun, and fell down upon the earth for fear. But Jesus, laying hold on my hand, lifted me from the ground, and the dew was then sprinkled upon me. But he, wiping my face, kissed me and said unto me, Fear not, Joseph, look upon me, for it is I. Then I looked upon him and said, Rabboni, Elias. He answered me, I am not Elias, but Jesus of Nazareth, whose body thou didst bury. I said to him, Show me the tomb in which I laid thee. Then Jesus, taking me by the hand, led me unto the place where I laid him, and showed me the linen clothes and napkin which I put round his head. Then I knew that it was Jesus, and worshipped him, and said, Blessed be he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Next person. Finish off the chapter, and then Matt can pick up on the next. Okay, I thought we were doing 12. Oh, okay. Uh, Jesus again 
taken me by the hand, led me to Arimathea, to my own house, and said to me, Peace be to thee, but go not out of thy house till the fortieth day, but I must go to my disciples. Chapter 12. When the chief priests when the chief priests and heard all the things, they were astonished and fell down with their faces on the ground as dead men. And crying out to one another said, What is this extraordinary sign which has come to pass in Jerusalem? We know the father and the mother of Jesus. And a certain Levite said, I know many of his relations, religious persons, who are wont to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings to the God of Israel in the temple with prayers. And when the high priest Simeon took him up in his arms, he said to him, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Simeon in like manner blessed Mary, the mother of Jesus, and said to her, I declare to thee concerning that child, he is appointed for the fall and rising again of many, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, and the thoughts of many hearts shall be revealed. Then said all the Jews, Let us send to those three men, who said they saw him talking with the disciples in Mount Olivet. After this they asked him what they had seen, who answered with one accord, In the presence of the God of Israel we affirm, that we plainly saw Jesus talking with his disciples in Mount Olivet and ascending up to heaven. Then Ananias and Gephas took them into separate places and examined them separately, who unanimously confessed the truth and said they had seen Jesus. Then Annas said to Caiaphas, See if this Caiaphas said, Our law saith, By the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established. But what have we said? The blessed Enoch pleased God and was translated by the word of God, and the bearing place of the blessed Moses is known. But Jesus was delivered to Pilate, whipped, crowned with thorns, spit upon, pierced with a spear, crucified, died upon the cross, was buried, and his body, the honorable Joseph, buried in a new sepulcher, sepulcher, and he testifies that he saw him alive. And besides, these men have declared that they saw him talking with his disciples in Mount Olivet and ascending up to heaven. Pass. Then Joseph, rising up, said to Annas and Caiaphas, You may be justly under a great surprise that you have been told that Jesus is alive and gone up to heaven. It is indeed a thing really surprising that he should not only himself arise from the dead, but also raise others from their graves who have been seen by many in Jerusalem. And now hear me a little. We all knew the blessed Simeon, the high priest, who took Jesus when an infant into his arms in the temple. This same Simeon had two sons of his own, and we were all present at their death and funeral. Go therefore and see their tombs, for these are open, and they are risen. And behold, they are in the city of Arimathea, spending their time together, in offices of devotion. Some indeed have heard the sound of their voices in prayer, but they will not discourse with anyone, but they continue as mute as dead men. But come, let us go to them and behave ourselves towards them with all due respect and caution. And if we can bring them to swear, perhaps they will tell us some of the mysteries of their resurrection. When the Jews heard this, they were exceeding, exceedingly, they exceedingly rejoiced. Then Annas and Caiaphas, Nicodemus, Joseph, and Gamaliel went to Arimathea, but did not find them in their graves, but walking about in the city. They found them on their bended knees at their devotions. Then saluting them with all respect and deference to God, they brought them to the synagogue at Jerusalem. And having shut the gates... They took the book of the law of the Lord and putting in their hands, swore them by God Adonai and the God of Israel, who spoke to our fathers by the law and the prophets, saying, 
if ye believe him who raised you from the dead to be Jesus, tell us what ye have seen and how you were raised from the dead. Charinus and Lentheus, the two sons of Simeon, trembled when they heard these things and were disturbed and groaned. And at the same time, looking up to heaven, they made the sign of the cross with their fingers on their tongues. And immediately they spake and said, Give each of us some paper, and we will write down for you all those things which we have seen. And they sat down and wrote. And I guess that's the end of that verse. Sat yes. down and wrote saying, okay. O oh, oh Lord Jesus and Father, who art God, also the resurrection and life of the dead, give us leave to declare thy mysteries, which we saw after death belonging to thy cross, for we are sworn by thy name. For thou hast forbid thy servants to declare the secret things which were wrought by the divine power in hell. When we were placed with our fathers in the depth of hell, in the blackness of darkness, on a sudden there appeared the color of the sun like gold and a substantial purple, purple colored light enlightening the palace. Presently upon this, Adam, the father of all mankind, with all the patriarchs and prophets, rejoiced and said, that light is the author of everlasting light, who hath promised to translate us to everlasting light. Then Isaiah the prophet cried out and said, This is the light of the Father and the Son of God, according to my prophecy when I was alive upon earth. The land of Zebulon and the, and the land of Nephthalim beyond Jordan, a people who walked in darkness saw a great light, and to them who dwelled in the re region of the shadow of death, light is arisen. And now he is come and hath enlightened us who sat in death. And while we were all rejoicing in the light which shone upon us, our father Simeon came among us and congratulating all the company said, Glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, whom I took up in my arms when an infant in the temple and being moved by the Holy Ghost said to him and acknowledged that now mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. All the saints who were in the depth of hell hearing this rejoiced the more. Afterwards there came forth one like a, a little hermit and was asked by everyone, Who art thou? To which he replied, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, John the Baptist and the prophet of the Most High, who went before him, before his coming to prepare his way, to give the knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of sins. And I, John, when I saw Jesus come to me, being moved by the Holy Ghost, I said, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And I baptized him in the river Jordan and saw Holy Ghost descending upon him in form of a dove and heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And now, while I was going before him, I came down hither to acquaint you that the Son of God will next visit us as the day spring from one on high will come to us who are in darkness and the shadow of death. Chapter 14. But when the first man, our father Adam, heard these things, that Jesus was baptized in Jordan, he called out to his son Seth and said, Declare to your sons, the patriarchs and prophets, all those things which thou didst hear from Michael, the archangel, when I sent thee to the gates of paradise to entreat God that he would anoint my head when I was sick. Then Seth, coming near to the patriarchs and prophets, said, I, Seth, when I was praying to God at the gates of paradise, beheld the angel of the Lord, Michael, appear to me, saying, I am sent unto thee from the Lord. I am appointed to preside over human bodies. I tell thee, Seth, do not pray to God in tears, and entreat him for the oil of the tree of mercy, wherewith to anoint thy father Adam for his headache, because thou canst not by any means obtain it till the last day and times, namely, till five thousand and five hundred years be passed. 
Then will Christ, the most merciful Son of God, come on earth to raise again the human body of Adam, and at the same time to raise the bodies of the dead, and when he cometh, he will be baptized in Jordan. Then with the oil of his mercy he will anoint all those who believe on him, and the oil of his mercy will continue to future generations for those who shall be born of the water and the Holy Ghost unto eternal life. And when at that time the most merciful Son of God, Christ Jesus, shall come down on earth, he will introduce our father, father Adam unto paradise, to the tree of mercy. When all the patriarchs and prophets heard all these things from Seth, they rejoiced more. While all the saints were rejoicing, the prince and captain of death said to the prince of hell, Jesus of Nazareth himself, who boasted that he was the Son of God, and yet was a man afraid of death, and said, Soul is sorrowful even to death. Besides, he did many injuries to me and to many others, for those whom I made blind with various devils, cured his word, yea, and those whom I brought dead to thee, he by force away from thee. To this the prince of hell replied to Satan, Who is that so powerful prince who is afraid of death? For all the potentiates of the earth are subject to my power. Thou brought us objection by thy power. But if be, he be so powerful in his human nature thee for truth, that he is almighty in his divine nature. No man can resist his power. Before he said he was afraid of death, he designed to ensnare thee, and unhappy it will be to thee for everlasting ages. When Satan replied he said to the prince of hell, Why didst thou express a doubt, and was afraid to receive that Jesus of Nazareth, thy adversary and mine? As for me, I tempted him, and stirred up my old people of the Jews with zeal and anger against him. I sharpened the spear for his suffering. I mixed the gall and vinegar, and commanded that he should drink it. The cross to crucify him, and the nails to pierce through his hands and feet. And now his death is near at hand, and I will bring him hither, subject both to thee and me. Then the prince of hell answering said, Thou saidest to me just now that he took away the dead from me by force. They who have been kept here till they should live again upon earth were taken away hence. But by their own power, by, by prayers made to God, and their almighty God took them from me. Who then is that Jesus of Nazareth that by his word hath taken away the dead from me without prayer to God. Perhaps it is the same who took away from me Lazarus after he had been four days dead and did both stink and was rotten and of whom I had possession as a dead, dead person. Yet he brought him to life again in his power. Satan answering, Prince of hell, it is the very same person, Jesus of Nazareth. Which when the prince of hell heard, he said to him, I adjure thee by the powers which belong to thee and me, that thou bring him not to me. For when I heard the power of his word, I trembled for fear, and all my impious company were at the same time disturbed, and we were not able to detain Lazarus. But he gave himself a shake, and with all the signs of malice, he immediately went away from us. And the very earth, which the dead body of Lazarus was lodged, presently turned him out alive. I know now that he is Almighty God, who could perform such things, who is mighty in his domination, in his human nature, who is the Saviour of mankind. Not therefore this person hither, he will set at liberty all those whom I hold in prison under bound with the 
fetters of their sins and will conduct them to everlasting life. Thank you, everybody, for reading with us today. And I'm shocked at just how much of this story and how much of this uh, the prophecy has been covered up. And in reading this text, it's just, uh, it, it's really eye-opening. You know, uh, Zen and I did a show last night speaking on some of the Messianic prophecy and some of the, the things that were removed from the Tanakh by the Jews. And we see here uh, that Satan, in talking with the prince of hell, he said that he stirred up some of his old people, the Jews. So we see this differentiation between the people that were in Israel. And we know that the Messiah said to some of them that they were of their father, the devil. And it's, it's very clear that that is uh, some, some truth. You know, he said that those who don't know me don't know the father. And it's very true. So after we do our reading, we always go into a time of sharing insights or emphasizing any of the certain scriptures that we read today. So we'll open up the mic. And if anyone would like to share anything, please feel free. I'll share um, a story that was given even to Adam and which he told to Seth. And we see this repeated in the Gospel of Nicodemus that Seth, Adam implores Seth to tell him of the prophecy that he had given to him long ago. Because when Adam was cast forth, exiled from paradise, Christ the Word gave him the prophecy that he would come to redeem him 5,500 years after he was banished from paradise. And this was one of the uh, most important topics that I cover in one of my latest books, The Ancient Prophecies of Christ. But I'll share with you this particular, uh, the basis for what we are talking about even here with Christ's descent down into Sheol and freeing them from the bondage um, of Hades. It says, The prophecy Adam said to Seth his son, You have heard, my son, that God is going to come into the world after a long time. He will be conceived of a virgin and put on a body, be born like a human being and grow up as a child. He will perform signs and wonders on the earth, will walk on the waves of the sea. He will rebuke the winds and they will be silenced. He will motion to the waves and they will stand still. He will open the eyes of the blind and cleanse the lepers. He will cause the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. He will straighten the hunchback, strengthen the paralyzed, find the lost, drive out evil spirits and cast out demons. He spoke to me about this in paradise after I picked some of the fruit in which death was hiding. Adam, Adam, do not fear. You wanted to be a god? I will make you a god. Not right now, but after a space of many years. I am consigning you to death, and the maggot and the worm will eat your body. And I answered and I said to him, Why, my lord? And he said to me, because you listen to the words of the serpent. You and your posterity will be food for the serpent, but after a short time, there will be mercy on you because you were created in my image, and I will not leave you to waste away in Sheol. For your sake, I will be born of the Virgin Mary. For your sake, I will taste death and enter the house of the dead. For your sake, I will make a new heaven and I will be established over your posterity. And after three days, while I'm in the tomb, I will raise up the body I received from you, and I will set you at the right hand of my divinity. 
and I will make you a God just like you wanted. And I will receive favor from God, and I will restore to you and to your posterity that which is the justice of heaven. You have heard, my son Seth, that a flood is coming and will wash the whole earth because of the daughters of Cain, your brother who killed your brother Abel out of passion for your sister Labuda, since sins had been created through your mother Eve. And after the flood, there will be 6,000 years left to the form of the world, and then its end will come. And this is from the Testament of Adam. I'll share one final paragraph. And I, Seth, wrote this testament, and my father died. And they buried him at the east of paradise, opposite the first city built on the earth, which was named after Enoch. And Adam was born to his grave by the angels and powers of heaven, because he had been created in the image of God. And the sun and the moon were darkened, and there was thick darkness for seven days. And we sealed the testament, and we put it in the cave of treasures with the offering of offerings Adam had taken out of paradise, gold and myrrh and frankincense. And the sons of kings, the magi, will come and get them, and they will take them to the Son of God, to Bethlehem of Judea, to the cave. And that, in fact, did happen. Uh, if you read a book called the Revelation of the Magi, it speaks about how the star of Bethlehem was Christ descending down from the heavens, as is revealed in the ascension of Isaiah, and that he then took uh, the Magi, who were the children of Seth, and led them to the Cave of Treasures, where they received these testaments that had been uh, saved by Adam and Seth and um, Enoch and Noah and Shem and others, and you know, placed in that particular cave. And then they also received the gold, the myrrh, and the frankincense. And they took that and presented it to Christ uh, when they came to the cave where he was born. And so that prophecy was also fulfilled in the same manner that the prophecy of Christ descending down into Sheol and freeing Adam and his children and taking them back into paradise where they were restored to their former bright nature. It, it says here, you know, God, like it says in John chapter 3, um, that does not your scripture say that you are gods? And it's meaning that we were once preexistent angelic beings, um, gods as in little g, like the angels that were cast out of paradise, not gods in the sense of the Godhead which established and created all things because they are set apart they are beyond time and space beyond they were never created and uh, and so that's the difference whereas the angels the little gods they were created in the same manner that we were uh, in the our former state and our pre-existence um, that God knew us before the foundations of the world so that's the foundation for this particular prophecy that we're reading about and that was fulfilled in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Excuse me, Zen. Um, can you yeah. just quote to me the books where it talks about the star of Bethlehem being Christ ascending down? Yeah, it's called the Revelation of the Magi. It was just released in 2016 by a gentleman named Brett Landau um, and it's from a second century Syriac text and you can read it it's a really incredible uh, text it's um, new but it confirms that the Magi were the children of Seth and that when Adam gave Seth this prophecy they then established an order to watch for the return of Christ which they knew would come 5,500 years after Adam was banished from paradise. And they indeed, when they saw and were witness to the star of Bethlehem, um, it then led them to the cave of treasures. And that's when they entered into the land of Judea. They visited Herod and asked him, you know, about the king that was born. And that's when 
they asked the Magi, to, he asked the Magi to come back uh, and to tell him um, where what they had discovered. And the angel warned them to not go that way, uh, that way or take that route back, but to go another way. And that's when Herod sent um, the henchmen to slaughter all the children that were two and younger in Bethlehem. Uh, and so, yeah, the revelation of the Magi. And would you agree that Daniel, the prophet Daniel, was part of that bloodline? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And anyone else who would like to share some insights, please feel free. The mic is open. I found it uh, interesting when we hear Satan talking to death, the kind of uh, shallow and hollow cocky arrogance that he has. Uh, it's that same arrogance that we see repeated within his children of the New World Order. Uh, and I, I look forward to seeing that brought to justice. So I enjoy reading that. Absolutely. I think it's awesome. The, the verse that uh, says that light is the author of everlasting light who has promised to translate us to everlasting light. And it makes me think of that verse. Um, and I may not be quoting it exactly, but. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Um, and I look forward to that day when his light will arise upon us. Amen. Amen. Uh, speaking of the light, just really quick comment. Uh, I reveal in the Great Contest 1, the war in heaven, that Christ being introduced as the light, where we see in Genesis chapter 1, uh, that God created the heavens and the earth, and then we see the Spirit of God, which was the Holy Spirit, hovering upon the waters. In the third verse, you hear the audible voice of the Most High. The Father said, let there be light, or, or light be. And this was Christ that was revealed as the light of the world. And that's when the creation came into uh, visibility. And the angels, seeing the broad expanse, of the creation shouted for joy that's where job says the morning stars shouted for joy but that's also in that moment when christ was given dominion over all the angels and revealed to them as the son of god and their creator that's when iniquity was found within lucifer and then that's also when he decided to try to uh, overthrow christ and to set his throne in the sides of the north above the mount of the congregation and to be like the most high and so the story goes is that that then he went to all the angels and tempted them one by one a third of them joined him in rebellion and they went to war against the godhead and we see in the first book of adam and eve chapter 55 it tells us about um, because of the strength of christ that they were banished and cast out and exiled here to this realm, and they were the first to be placed under the authority of death, uh, which in Psalms 82, uh, you see that they were then sentenced to die the death of a man. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, I'll read uh, from the Gospel of Bartholomew. And this one here is, there's three, it's in three languages, uh, Greek, Latin, and uh, Slo Slovakian or Slavonic. Uh, so I'll try to read through this, but uh, it's an interesting conversation between, uh, as we read here, the Prince of Hell and Satan. And in this this reading here, it's Hades and Belial, so it's very similar. It says, 
And I'll start in, uh, on 12, chapter 1, verse 12. Hades said, Who is the king of glory that cometh down from heaven unto us? And uh, let me give you a little background. This is uh, Bartholomew talking to Jesus after the resurrection. He's asking him questions, basically. Where did you go? What happened? And, and so we get up to verse 12, and it says, uh, in, the, in that conversation, and he's, uh, he's saying, he heard uh, Hades say, Who is the king of glory that cometh down from heaven unto us? And when I had descended, and when I had descended 500 steps, Hades was troubled, saying, I hear the breathing of the Most High. And cannot endure it. But the devil answered and said, Submit not thyself, O Hades, but be strong, for God himself hath not descended upon earth. But when I when I had descended yet five hundred steps, the angels and the powers cried out, Take hold, remove the doors, for behold the king of glory cometh down. And Hades said, O oh, woe unto me, for I hear the breath of God. And the devil said to Hades, Why affrightenest thou me, Hades? Is it a prophet? And hath he made himself like unto God? This prophet will will take and bring him hither unto those who think to ascend unto heaven. And Hades said, Which of the prophet is this? Show me. Is it Enoch, the scribe of righteousness? But God hath not suffered him to come down upon the earth before the end of the six thousand years. Sayest thou, is it Elias, the avenger? But before he cometh not down, what shall I do, whereas the destruction is of God? For surely our end is at hand, for I have the number of years in mine hands. Uh, be not troubled, my make safe thy gates, and strengthen thy bars. Consider God cometh not down upon the earth. Hades said unto him, These be no good words that I hear from thee. My belly is rent, and my inward parts are pained. It cannot be but but that God cometh hither. Alas, whither shall I flee before the face of the power of the great king? Suffer me to enter into myself. For behold, uh, thee was I formed. Then did I enter, into, enter in and scourged him and bound him with chains that cannot be loosed and brought forth thence all the patriarchs that came unto the cross. Bartholomew said to him, Tell me, Lord, who was... Who was he whom the angels bear up in the hands, even that man that was of great stature? Jesus answered and said to him, It was Adam the first formed, for whose sake I came down from heaven upon earth, and said to him, I was hung upon a cross for thee, for thy children's sake. And he that heard it groaned and said, So was thy good pleasure, O Lord. And it goes on and on. But that conversation between Hades and Satan was uh, very interesting. Yeah, I love that book. One of my most favorite texts as well. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, it's definitely a great parallel to read side by side. So we have about five minutes left. So we'll open up the mic now to questions as well as insights. So if anyone has questions, please feel free. We had one question a little bit earlier from Vahid. She said, uh, she quoted, Carinus and Lentheus, the two sons of Simeon, tr trembled when they heard these things and were disturbed and groaned, and at the same time looking up to heaven, they made the sign of the cross with their fingers on their tongues. Curious about them making the sign of the cross on their tongues. Uh, can anyone explain? Hmm. Never considered it and never heard of anybody else doing it, so I really don't know the significance of it. Yeah, the first thing that came to my mind when, when it was read was they did this action and then they spoke, so I thought maybe they could not speak until they got permission or something. Right. Yeah, I read somewhere as well that they were told, uh, kind of similar to in Revelation when we see John, you know, he sees uh, this lion-like figure and the thunders that speak, the seven thunders speak, and then he's told to seal up those things and don't write them. 
it kind of seems like they were told not to talk about what they were experiencing as well. And then they were being uh, called to question, you know, by the law and to give their testimony. And maybe you're right. It was like they were seeking permission. And my thought was maybe they're showing uh, their submission to the Messiah who died on the cross for them to all of the Jews who were questioning them. You know, they would see the sign of the cross that they made, and then they're going from being dumb to being able to speak and then giving their testimony. Yeah, Vahid says, do you think the Catholics might have interjected it? And that is a possibility. Yeah, these stories have come to us from many, many centuries. Yeah, I think of that with some of these Gospels that were written, that there's definitely some Catholic influence with the terminology or, you know, the way it's written. Definitely. Holly, were you about to say something? I was going to ask if anyone could speak on the dew that it talks about. The dew that fell on, fell on them. And that's I think the dew, said the dew fell on uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Right. I know in one of the apocryphal books it speaks about the dew fell on Mary before she had Jesus. Yeah, it's very interesting. It reminds me of the dew that turned into the manna, you know, the dew of heaven. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, I'm just going to make a point that when the Catholics do the cross, it's the upside down cross. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, an interesting question, um, Zen. The day of preparation. Now, when what calendar do you think they're on, or do you think that the they were on the Julian Caesar calendar, which was created about forty fifty years BC, and they also keep the moon calendar, or do you think that they're all just on the Julius Caesar calendar, which is very similar to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, I personally think that they, the real disciples and followers, even up until the Essenes and Qumran, that they attempted to keep the lunar solar calendar. And we can see even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are numerous scrolls where they're trying to um, follow and convert the dates of the Julian calendar to the dates of the lunar solar calendar and to keep all that in alignment so that they could really determine when the real feast days were and when the real Sabbath occurred. And so up until that time, and we know that the, um, the, the Romans imposed under the threat of death uh, that they convert, they force this conversion, but um, they did try to yes. keep. So when Jesus, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when Jesus was going to the temple, I believe that that would have been the Caesar calendar, which was on the Saturday Sabbath. But in his own heart, he would also keep the moon calendar. Yeah, I'm. Um, I feel certain that. Um, Christ was keeping the, you know, because he created it and he knew mm. all about it. And and so I'm pretty sure he wasn't going to follow a, a false pagan calendar and abide by it since he knew the truth of it. And that um, he would probably also instruct the apostles as to the truth of the, yes. the correct calendar and the correct feast days. The Sabbath that they would have been that they would have had to have been the Saturday Sabbath. That's custom right. of the day. And uh, well, you know, as far as um, 
Justin and I, we did a show and we talked about how we know that it was a full moon as to the uh, the eve of the Passover. And mm -hmm. so that shows that the full moon, which is always on the 15th of Nisan, it's always the second Sabbath and the 15th of Tishri, that mm -hmm. in my opinion, the occurrence of that feast day and that Sabbath being connected to the full moon shows that they were following a lunar solar calendar. Right. But it says in Matthew and in Luke that he he rose on the evening at the end of the Sabbath, which would have been the Saturday Sabbath. But in, in my opinion, he rose on the, um, the 16th of Nisan as the high priest. And whether, you know, whatever day they, they believe that to be, I guess they would celebrate, uh, if they were celebrating Sabbath on Saturday, then they say he rose on Sunday, then that would make sense according to the Gregorian calendar. But I know that it was on the first day of the week, which was, you know, the 16th of Nisan, which was the feast of first fruits and that he was the high priest in the order of Melchizedek and resurrecting Adam and his descendants they were presented as the resurrected first fruits to the most high God when he um, took them back up into paradise and they were then baptized in the Arcturian lake and restored to paradise um, and that was again part of the the fulfillment of the prophecy that he had given to Adam when he banished him from paradise and the same one that he told to Seth. And we also yes. see in you know that whole passage that I read how much detail that Christ had given to Adam as mm -hmm. to, you know, even walking on the waves, um, that he would be born of a virgin named Mary, uh, all of these things, I mean, great detail uh, passed down in the primary Adamic literature as to those things which he fulfilled in his coming. Yes, I think he's in. Absolutely. Um, Vahid mentions that it was interesting that they mentioned the 5,500 year prophecy. That is something the uh, Zen has done a couple shows about with a couple of our brothers uh, on this YouTube channel. You can go back and look for the 5,500 year prophecy videos to learn more about that. There was a lot uh, that was given in extra biblical books and the books that weren't made into the canon that has been brought up here in the Gospel of Nicodemus, like uh, the names of Janus and Jambres and things like this 5,500 year prophecy and yeah, a lot of these uh, very interesting accounts that can uh, confirm that the writer of this Gospel of Nicodemus they they were definitely plugged in to the stories of old and it is 805 now so we thank you everybody for joining us for this amazing study we're so grateful for every moment that we're able to share with you all in fellowship and uh, we're sorry if we missed any questions but we'll definitely be here and able to take questions at the beginning during the fellowship next week if you have any remaining questions or just want to chat uh, we'll see you then and we love you all and y'all bless you also you can submit any questions that you might have on anything um, to joy or justin at sacred word publishing and if we didn't get to them in this show or the uh, Discord gatherings will do it on the AMAs. Yes, you can email me at sacredwordpublishingllc at gmail.com with subject line questions for Zen or AMA for Zen, something like that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and I encourage everyone in the YouTube live stream to get involved in the Discord channel. Uh, look in the description box below the video and 
hit the invite link if you need help follow the video tutorial that we posted up there because after the live stream ends we're going to go into a time of sharing prayer requests and praying for one another and we truly believe in the power of prayer we love you all amen god bless all good night shalom shalom shalom, shalom. shalom. sacred word revealed comes to atlanta georgia on march 27th to 29th 2020 purposed to reveal end time mysteries to prepare the final generation we must don the full armor of god featuring zen garcia Gary Wayne, Stephen and Yana Benun, Dr. Stephen Pigeon, Justin James Garcia, Dr. Joy Pugh, buy your tickets now at sacredwordreveal.com.